Hi everyone, it's Lorelai, and welcome to another RPG Maker With tutorial. In the last video, we looked at how skills and states are set up. Today, we're going to make custom skills for our two characters, Kale and Lyra. I'm going to increase the maximum to 260. That's just a nice even number that we can set it to for now. And I like how RPG Maker has these abilities sort of organized, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy where it says Hunter and then paste it here and rename it to Sword Fighter. And then I'm gonna leave everything else blank because it is just a header. So the first ability I wanna make is called Sword Slash. I'm going to pick a sword icon and then the description will be slashes an enemy with your sword. The skill type is going to be special. It's not going to have an MP cost, but I am going to give it a TP cost of something very cheap maybe just five. And the reason for the TP cost, even though it's not a very powerful ability, is because I want it to be different than just the regular attack ability that Kale is already gonna have access to. The range will be one enemy and the occasion will be only during battle. Under activate, I'm going to set the hit type to physical attack and the animation can be slash physical. I'm going to set the message to uses sword slash I'm going to set the required weapon to a sword, and then the damage is going to be HP damage. Now for the formula. RPG Maker With lets you use an easy formula, basic parameter formula, which means that your formula can use attack, defense, magic tech, magic defense, etc., or applied parameter formulas. So the formula could potentially use your HP regen stat or your recovery effect stat, if you wanted to get really detailed. And then under other, we can select variable or random. If I went under easy and select attack enemy, it's going to set that formula that we saw before. Our attack times four minus the enemy's defense times two. And if I press the plus button, it's going to toggle between how you can see this formula, whether it's in basic English like this one, or if it's how the formula is going to be displayed in the editor. Now for this ability, I want it to be different than the regular attack, and this formula is being used for that regular attack. So I'm gonna go under basic parameters here, and I'm actually gonna go all the way over to attack times four, I'm going to get rid of that four and say it is attack times five instead. So this ability is going to be a little bit stronger than the basic attack. I'll keep variance at 20% and I will say that yes, it can critical hit. I am going to leave effects empty. Sword slash is a very basic attack. Now I was going to add a TP gain to this ability. So even though it costs five TP, it's also going to give you a lot back. So let's say you gain 25. The expected rotation, I guess, for a lack of better word, is that Kale would use a regular attack that costs nothing. And once he has five TP, he can use this sword slash, which is a stronger attack. And then that will generate even more TP for him to use on an even stronger attack. And that stronger attack is going to be called Crescent Strike. For this icon, I'm going to pick a bigger sword because it is a bigger attack. And the description is a powerful ability that reduces the target's defense and magic defense. Set the skill type to special and the TP cost is going to be 50, at least for now. The range is one enemy and the occasion is only on the battle screen. Under activate, this time we are not gaining any TP from this. It's a pure TP spender. We're going to set the attack to physical attack and the animation to slash effect. Under damage, we want to say HP damage. For the formula, I'm going to set it to the same as the sword slash ability. So we just have to replace this four with a five and say yes, it can critically hit. And then under effects, what I want to do is add a state, but we don't actually have this state made yet. So let's go to states, add a few different states. Let's say we've got uh, 40. And then here we're going to call this state weakened. Set the icon to this defense down icon. And we're going to keep the rest of these the same. Under removal, we're going to say at action end for three turns. And then under traits, what we're going to say is parameter defense 50, 
the magic defense parameter also to 50. We are going to apply this state when we use Crescent Strike. So this is going to multiply the enemy's defense and magic defense by 50%. So let's go back to our skills. Under Crescent Strike, we're going to go under Effects, States, Add State, Weakened 100% of the time. So this is a stronger ability than Sword Slash in that it costs a lot more TP. It does the same amount of damage, but this time it adds that weakened state. His third ability is going to be a standard AoE ability, Blade Sweep. And the description is Sweep Sword under all enemies dealing damage. The skill type is special. I'm going to set the TP cost to 10 and the range is going to be all enemies, only from the battle screen. The hit type should be physical attack and the animation is going to be sweet. The damage is HP damage and the formula is going to be a very basic formula with critical hits enabled. We don't have any effects for this ability. It is your standard AOE attack. His next ability is going to be called Rallying Cry. And this is going to be a support ability that increases the entire party's attack and magic attack. Rally your allies, increasing attack and magic attack. And I'm actually gonna have this one cost some MP. Now before I actually set how much MP, let's quickly look at Kale's class and go under max MP. And how much MP does he have at level one? He has 53 MP. Knowing that we can determine how many times he can cast Rallying Cry before he goes out of mana, assuming none of his equipment increases mana, which I don't think it does right now. So let's say the mana cost is 20. So he can use it two times during battle, at least at level one, and that will increase over time. The range this time is going to be all allies. And the occasion, this could be always, you could set it to increase their attack and magic from the menu screen, but I'm gonna set it to battle screen. I think it's easier to control that way. I'm going to set the speed to 2000 to make sure that it always goes first. The hit type will be certain hit, so our allies cannot accidentally evade from this buff. And the animation is going to be shout. There's no damage with this ability, but we are going to add another state. So let's go back down to states. Let's go below weekend and add a new state called rallied. And the removal will be at the end of three turns. Under traits, we will go to parameters, set attack parameter to times. Let's go crazy here and say, 200%. That's going to double their attack. <laughs> we might have to nerf that, but let's see how this goes. We will do the same with the magic attack. Okay, and we'll go back to our skill and add state rallied at 100%. Okay, there's one more ability we're going to add and it is a heavy AoE ability, a heavy AoE TP spender. I'm going to just go ahead and copy Blade Sweep and paste it here, just because it's another AOE ability. We're gonna change the name to Shockwave, and the description will be Slams Down Sword, sending out a powerful shockwave to all enemies. The TP cost for this one is going to be, let's go crazy and say 70 for now. We'll change the animation to, let's go with Neutral All 2. Let's change the formula so that it actually ignores enemy defenses. And then how about we give it a chance to stun? Let's add state stun and we'll say 50% chance. We can even adjust our description to call that out. Ignores defense, may stun. Okay, and those are the five abilities that we have for our sword fighter for Kale. Next, we are going to make our abilities for Lyra, our crystal healer. So let's copy the title here, paste it here, and just rename this to crystal healer. Our first ability is going to be her bread and butter healing ability. Let's call it crystal light. Mmm, sounds delicious. The description can be heals target with the calming light of a crystal. It will be magic type. For the MP cost, once again, I'm going to go under classes and check out my Crystal Healer's max MP for level one. She has a lot more than Kale, 128. 
And we don't want the healing ability to be too expensive to use. So let's make it cost 10 for now. And then if we need to increase that later, we will. The range is going to be a single ally. And the occasion I'm actually going to set to always. You can use it on the battle screen or on the menu screen. I'm going to keep hit type as certain. That way they can't accidentally evade the heal. And for animation, I'll pick heal one, two. Under damage, I'm going to select HP recover. For the formula, first I'm going to check again, this time the max HP of our classes. So at level one, we've got 466 HP or we've got 549 HP. And the crystal healer's magic attack is 18. So if I said her magic times four, that's about 72 plus let's say 200. So if we go under formula, basic parameters, first I can type 200 plus her own magic attack times four. So at level one, this would look like a heal of about 270, which is half of Kale's HP. This is really strong, but I'm gonna keep it as it is for now. And if we have to nerf it later, then we can do that. And yes, we can critically hit with this. Now the crystal healer doesn't have to just heal. She can also deal some magic damage. So let's call this ability Radiant Burst. A blast of light that might blind the target. Let's set the MP cost of this one to 20. The range will stay at a single enemy and the occasion will be from the battle screen. Let's set the hit type to magic attack and the animation to light one, two. And the damage is going to be HP damage. We're going to select the element of light so we can have enemies that might be weak to light. And I'm going to set the formula to a very basic magic attack. We can adjust this formula during playtesting if we need to. Critical hit to yes. And under effects, let's add state blind to 50%. So there's a 50% chance this might blind the target. Okay, next we are going to have the ability cleanse. The description will be removes all debuffs from the target. It's a pretty strong ability, but for this short game, I think it's fine. The MP cost will be, let's say 30, because it is a pretty powerful ability and that might give more incentive to use items as opposed to cleanse. But well, let's try it. Let's see how this goes. And the range is going to be a single ally. The occasion, again, is going to be always because we can use it on the battle or the menu screen. The animation will be, let's do cure one, two. And under effects, we're going to have to remove all the states that we think our game is going to have. And spoiler alert, I know that our game is going to have poison and I think we are going to have stun as well. Her next ability is called Crystalline Shield. And this is going to be similar to the sword fighter's rallying cry, except instead of increasing attack, we're going to increase defenses. I'm going to set the MP cost to, let's say 25 for now. And the range is going to be all allies. The animation will be, I like power up three because it actually shows a little shield. And before we can add the effect, we have to make the state buff to defense and magic defense. And then I'll just change the name to shielded. And then under skills, we'll go ahead and add that state. Okay, one more ability for our crystal healer. This ability is called piercing shards. A rain of crystal shards that may bleed enemies. Let's set the cost of this to, let's go ahead and set it to 30 for now and set the range to all enemies. The occasion should be battle screen. We'll set the hit type to magic attack and the animation to light all two. Let's set the damage to HP damage, set it to a light element. And then the formula is again going to be this very basic magic attack that we can adjust later if we need to and say yes to critical hits. Then under effects, I want to add the bleed state. So I'm gonna go under states and I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm gonna scroll up here and grab poison and I'm gonna copy this, paste that here. And I'm just gonna use poison as my bleed because they basically function almost exactly the same. We're going to call this bleed, but I will set the auto removal to after 
three turns, let's say. And then we'll go to our skills and add that state with a 50% chance of happening. All right, so those are our 10 abilities that we added for Sword Fighter and Crystal Healer. The numbers that we put in here are not set in stone. They are going to need to change while we play test our game, but for now they'll do. So the last thing we want to do is go under classes, first Sword Fighter, and then under learn skills, we're going to determine what level they learn each of these abilities. So I'm going to say the sword fighter can get sword slash at level one. At level two, he gets crescent strike and so on for the rest of these abilities up until level five. Then let's do the same for our crystal healer. Again, up until level five. And finally, before we end this video, let's go ahead and test these abilities on a troop. Let's go with this slime and bat. So we would go under battle test. And here we have Kale at level one with his initial equipment. Let's go ahead and set his level to five so we can see all of his abilities. And if we press the bumper over to two, we'll be able to add Lyra. Now Lyra doesn't have any initial equipment, so that's why all of that is blank. I'm gonna set her level to five. So you could go through and add her weapons. I'm not going to, because that's just gonna take a little bit too much time. And with our two party members, let's go ahead and press okay and test out the battle. So we can see that Kale actually starts with a random amount of TP. Right now it's 18. So he can use Slash, he can use Blade Sweep, or he can use Rally and Cry. So let's go ahead and use Rally and Cry first. And then Lyra can actually use all of her abilities. Let's just go ahead and go Balls to the Wall, Piercing Shards. Oh good, our slime got bleeded, not the bat. We were unsuccessful with the bat, but that's fine. Let's have Kale do a blade sweep. And Lyra can do radiant burst on the slime. Oh, slime died. And so did the bat. <laughs> we might have been a little too powerful, but you know what? We were level five against those really early creatures. In the next episode, we will be making our own enemies for this game, so testing our skills on them will be a little bit more genuine. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. I will see you in the next video. Bye!